Now, before we dwell into the specifics and the technicalities, um, why do we have to learn animation? Now, when it comes to uh, websites and uh, user interfaces, um, there are times that you want to bring in more, uh, you, you want to improve user experience. Okay, so we generally call it UX or something. Where uh, there has been enough studies to show that uh, by having more interactivity in your applications, you tend to increase engagement and just likability uh, in your applications. Now, not just this, sometimes animations help you to um, uh, indicate something very obvious or uh, indicate uh, information to the users. Okay, so because of this, uh, it becomes very uh, nice for people to come back to your uh, application or just feel good about using your applications. Um, there could be also uh, more interactivity, something like you're trying to uh, make a use of some elements of game theory or something, and you want to uh, make the users interact with your application more, animations also help there. Um, now, uh, let's let's take up a few examples of what a simple animations are. You would have probably seen this uh, refresh um, spinners, right? Which just keeps rotating, and like uh, we would just like see different positions. Basically, it just keeps rotating in different aspects. Now, you would have seen this uh, if in your operating systems. You would have seen this if your mouse, if your system is slow and your mouse uh, starts rotating, right? Uh, that is a simple animation out there. So uh, when you see your mouse, which was um, initially like an arrow here, uh, and suddenly it has become this uh, spinner here, right? And it starts spinning, it is indicating to the user. So you have not even returned a single piece of text, but you are indicating to the user, hey, uh, the mouse is waiting for something. We are waiting for something, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, just wait till the operation is over. Once it's over, I will let you know by transitioning back into this state here. Now, I if you just notice this, this steps here, right? This can be plotted in a graph. Now, this represents the x-axis, which is the time. If you really think about it, this is time, right? And at different times, basically there are different styles. So let's assume X, uh, let's assume uh, we have something called S representing the style of the object. At let's say zero, we call it S zero. At one, we have S one. Then it goes to S two, then it goes to S three. And it keeps going on till some particular point, let's call S n, right? Now we can choose to say, okay, my animation should go from S zero to S N and maybe I should repeat after that. Maybe I should play it once, twice, or maybe I should do it for infinite times because we don't really know how long the spinner is supposed to go. It could be one second, could be 10 seconds, could be 30 seconds. We really don't know, but we know that every one second it should complete one revolution it should complete one one rotation here like 360 degrees for example now you can think of a very simple example with uh, uh let's say you have your um, solar system right so you have your sun here you have some planets here now if you just think about it, uh, the uh, let's assume this is the Earth here. Earth rotates around itself, right? So it rotates around itself once. It takes twenty-four hours. Every twenty-four hours, it it completes one rotation around its own point. Okay. In addition to that. It also rotates or re revolves around the sun object here, right? Once every approximately 365 days. And it keeps repeating, right? It keeps repeating. 
so this is one one kind of a transition that uh, that keeps repeating every 24 hours this is another transition that keeps repeating every 365 days right so this is itself a, a very clear example of how uh, animation or some kind of uh, change happens in real life and it keeps updating the state So let's just take an example of uh, someone who's built something like this, right? Let me just give an example of that. Uh, let me open that up for you. Right, this is uh, built by someone else. I did not do this, but it has a sim. It is it is built um, with CSS basically. Um, probably more advanced don't worry about it but you can see that uh, this is entirely purely built uh, with uh, css using css as such so um what i was mentioning earlier about how the particular uh, planets move uh, around and these have moons around it you, have, you can see the sun here and you can see individual planets in between uh, these positions moving also <laughs> So let's just take this example um, to understand uh, the things we just spoke about. So when it comes to working with uh, or applying this uh, CSS, there are two general categories or two general things that we need to discuss. So the two major things that you want to discuss are uh, transitions and transforms we will first look at the transforms and then we go to transitions now what does the term transform mean now maybe you might have uh, heard about the popular pop culture film called uh, transformers um, and you know it's it's about uh, robots which were transforming from one thing to another right so if you just think about it it is a uh, a piece of car which looks like a car right looks like a car and then it is uh, excuse my bad drawing but right let's say this is a car and this this basically transforms into this robot over there right and this is basically similar to what is happening in your CSS animations. In, in this case, what happens is transform is changing a state or changing or modifying something. Now, transform is uh, more than animation. It's about uh, more static or more specific to the properties to it. Now, let's take an example of what all things you can work with transform. Now, let's say you have an object or let's say you have some image. You generally want to work with transform, which are, are the kind of things you can modify or work with transform is basically to uh, move its position. We use something called translate for it. We can use translate X, Y, or just directly translate also. We can use, um, We can use something called scale. Scale is nothing but uh, scaling something from a larger to a smaller object. So let's say if it's a, if we say one is to one scale of let's say an object or some box here. If we say you wanted to scale it uh, by one or make it two, uh, we basically transform all of the sizes. For example, x, y, and z dimensions, right? And we make it bigger. Right. So if this is one by one by one cube, this will be two by two by two cube. So this is basically on scale what happens. So translate is more about moving, let's say, x direction, the y direction, right? 
So this is basically translate. Scale is about move or, or scaling it in different axes, basically x, y, z, or just x, y also. But scale will increase the size. You have something called rotate, which will rotate your particular um, object or this particular box uh, in in different uh, angles. You can have a rotate X and a rotate Y. Um, X, if you just think about it, it kind of rotates around this here. And Y is about this here. Right? So we'll, we'll look into more details of this when we work with uh, the properties with transform. So let's go ahead and code it out. Right. So let's create a development with some, let's use some image here. Right. And I'm going to use some free icon tools that we can get. And I'm um, just going to put something there and let's say arrow. Um, and let's just say width equals to 50, height equals to 50. Right, and um, I can, I don't have a live server here, I think. Oh, it's okay. Let me just put this along with here. Let me just run this up. Right. So we have this this particular um, box here, which is basically um, telling that this this is the arrow box, arrow arrow button here. Now let's say you wanted to basically uh, instead of creating a separate uh, icon, you wanted to reuse this. Right. So let's go add some style into your. Uh, HTML file, right? So let's add some styles to this. Um, so let's add a link here, which says um, rotation is a style sheet. And say, uh, um, sorry, if it goes to index.css. Right, and let's just see if that works. Yeah, so that, that seems fine. So let's apply a property here, or let's apply a class called. Um, Let's call it a box. So what I can say is that this box, right? I can create a property or a class called box here, and we can give it some particular um, values or information in, or change this information. So I can use the transform key, okay? So if you just go to transform and MDN, You'll find some information on that. So it, it, it you get a lot of methods that you can apply on transform. So uh, I mentioned a few things already, which is uh, translate. We spoke about rotate. We spoke about scale. Right. There are a few more things out there, but um, let's stick to uh, the ones we just discussed right now. So if I say translate, you'll see that it actually looks like some function here. Right it's translate and then it it accepts some values and you can put it inside these uh, parentheses here now i can give it some units here saying that translate and i can put say um 20 pixels now you can see that this basically is moving the the particular arrow button in a particular direction. Yeah. 
if I were to even just add some value, so hello, right? This is applying to the box. So if I just put it here, you can see that happening over there. If I were to create like a flex box on top of it, right? And if I just say flex and display flex, right? You can see that this particular hello is still there. So even though that this, this uh, we are only applying this translate to this box, which means the, the hello property or the hello text here is still remains in the same position that it's supposed to. So this is quite important, especially uh, later when you try to understand maybe a bit of performance or et cetera. Uh, but you just have to realize that this change that you've done or this, this transformation that you've done is very specific to this box only. It is, you're not trying to uh, change the rest of it, change the rest of the elements around you. Now, <coughs> what the uh, what the browser tries to do is something, it creates something called a stacking context. Okay, so it creates a new stacking context for you. Okay, um, and it pulls this uh, element or this box out of the stacking context and creates a new one and kind of moves it. So it doesn't affect the element around it. Now let's go see what else can you do with this translate. Now if I put a comma and put another 200 pixels, you can see that it is actually now moving diagonally 200 pixels. Right? So this is basically uh, a trans, uh, you're transforming and you're applying the translate property into it. Now you can apply other properties also, right? On uh, the other things like, for example, scale. If you're out scale and I say 1.5, you can see that it's making it 1.5 times bigger. Now, if I wanted to apply transform and scale, it'll apply both of it together. Right, so this is basically all it's doing is that it it applies one by one these properties. Now you will notice that I made a small change that I applied uh, earlier. I applied translate first and then scale, but now you can see that uh, it may look like the same property being applied here, but just by interchanging, you'll see different outputs. So what happens is in this case, we are translating it first, right? And then scaling it. But if you did scale first and then trans translate, we are first scaling it. So the translate might actually change a little bit because we are scaling it first. Right, so you can see that you can apply multiple function values into it. Now, let's look at a few more things in transform. Right, and we're going to take a rotate here. And if I put 90, I think 90 degree, you have to write, yeah, 90 degree. You can see that it moves in the clockwise direction. Clockwise is this, the, the direction of the clock. So it moved 90 degrees in the clockwise direction. If I used 180, it moved to the right now. If you put 270, it moves in that direction. If you do 360, it comes back over there. 
and this can keep going for how many of times you want, right? It just rotates it that many times. So we can also apply a rotate X or rotate Y. Now, uh, let's try to see how we can visualize this. So if you see rotate X and you put 45 degrees, what essentially happens is, um, assuming this is the X axis, okay. I can draw it in this manner. This is the x-axis, right? Your 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 arrow button was in this case. Now, when you rotate it by forty-five degrees, right? Let's assume that this is going in the clockwise direction. So you move it in the forty-five degrees in this manner. So the new size will be like this. But you, since you are viewing it from this angle here, we will end up with a smaller size of the actual object, right? Where uh, the actual object could have been a different, I'll just draw in a different height here, right? This would have been the actual one, but since we are rotating it around the X axis, which is this, right? This is the X axis. Right, because we are rotating around this, it will form a smaller height for you, which is what is happening here. So the moment you do 90 degrees, this is gonna be flat on this, which means if I did 90 degrees, you can see there's nothing on it. Right. If I did 80, you can see there's a small, small uh, angle here. You can see a bit of it. So the same goes with the Y direction. You would be, you would be creating around this axis here. So in this case, this will be the Y axis. So um, you are essentially saying that you need to rotate this around this basically, right? And we are viewing it from this angle again. Don't worry about specifics about this again. Uh, I'm just trying to explain to you how the rotate X and the rotate Y works. Uh, so this might be useful when you want to uh, move something um, like rotate in this manner, right? Like the, let's say for a coin and you wanted to have an effect like it's rotating, right? It might be useful in these cases. Of course, um, you might have to um, do a little more adjustment to get the right uh, output, but the essentially the idea remains the same. So there are a few more like skew and a few other values out there. Right, um, and we can use these to get our different outputs. Now, why do we have to know this uh, transform? Is because sometimes when you transition, you are basically transitioning or when you're moving or applying animations, you're applying from one state to another state. So the S1 and S2 might be different. For example, you want to rotate something, right? Or you want, to, you want to rotate something in some, let's assume in one angle, let's say, right? Uh, maybe at uh, one point it is zero, maybe at another point is 360. So during this time frame, you want to provide some output of change how it looks like. Now let's go try doing that. Now this is, achieved by using something called the transition, uh, using transition. Right, we're gonna use the transition for that. Now again, transition has a lot of properties on it and we're gonna look at uh, how to use transition. With this. Now let's, for a second, remove all this animation or, or transformation that we applied. And let's just say for a box, 
let's put a hover on it right and and let me just say i want the background color to be um aquamarine once i hover over Um, and let's just see. Right? Yeah, I was just refreshing it. So you can see that this is basically changing its color in this manner. I'm hovering over it, and then you get instantly there's a change in the color that happens. Now, what you can do with transition is you can apply to um all the properties in your particular box and you can say all and i can say one second right and let's put ease in over there or even if i just remove this i guess it should work you can see now that when I hover over it, it is not an immediate or an instant change. So this actually takes around a second for this to animate. So you can see that just by adding a transition and applying all to it, I'm able to get a different color on it. Now let's see if what happens if I, um, if I bring back this transform uh, scale, and let me just put this over here instead. So you can see that I am applying this CSS here, this hover property, whatever it is, then I'm hovering over it. So you can see that it actually scales up and translates to that position. So now we can clearly see how it's applying those. Now let's assume we just needed to change this and put this first here. Right? There's a slight difference in the position that you end up in. Right? But you do get a similar output. So by default, what really happens here is let's put time in the x-axis and we said one second so let's say zero to one second right um and let's take this as s1 and state two here okay so what happens is now by default, we don't tell what kind of a transition you need to get. Uh, the browser will basically try to give you a linear change. What does a linear change mean? So let's say you wanted to move to one second. In one second, let's say you wanted to um, move from zero meters to 10 meters. If you think about it, this is basically 10 meters per second. Now, assuming that we are moving linearly, it means that at 0.1 seconds, we are at one meter. 0.2 seconds, we are at two meter. And like that, we reach 10 meters. So essentially what happens is that in this case, it creates a linear gradient or a linear um, transition basically. So at this point, we will achieve the final output that we require. So at 0.5 seconds, we would have reached 25 pixels. And we would have reached a scale of 0.75. Now, all animations in generally real life are not, don't tend to be um, linear as such. 
So if you just say flower bloom, and you're trying to see the blooming of a flower, right? This may not be uh, linear as such. It might be a little slow in the beginning, maybe a little faster later. Right, so different animations out there might represent different ways to do it. Now, these are called timing functions. Okay. Now, uh, you already have a lot of timing functions that come with you. Now, what we used is something called a linear uh, timing function. You have things like ease in and ease out ease in out. Uh, you can create steps here. Steps is basically a step update. Right? So you have ease, you have ease in, you have ease out, you have ease in out, linear step start, step end. Now, if you want to create your own, you can actually go and create. There's something called a cubic busier curve. Uh, I'll, I'll decode this also later. Um, but let's let's start to uh, understand how this basically can be visualized. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, we can use this site. I think this is the one. Yes. So this is just a simple example of how uh, different uh, curves look like. Right, and this is, shows how the state from um, X to X1 or Y to Y1 is being handled. Right, so depending on what kind of output you want, you might want to uh, create or use these different um, curves for your output. Right, some might feel a little more interactive, some might feel a uh, little more correct for the kind of behavior you want to drive. Right, sometimes you want a very sharp intro and then like ease, in, ease out later. Right, so uh, that's what these easing functions are for. Now we'll go and uh, also try to understand how we can create our own. So uh, let's try to go figure out first um, how to work a little bit more with transitions. So uh, let's go back to our um, application here. So we can see that we got this animation here in this matter. Now let's try to add uh, linear and let's say infinite. Or I think we can give so we can see that this is a uh, linear output. And let's also just remove this for now. Just add the scale. So you can see that this increases and reduces in this format. Right? So if I were to change this to something like ease in, you might notice a small change there. So let's put if let's refresh that and if i put is in out you might notice a small difference now to just visualize this a little more further if you want to compare this is a site that you can use called cubicbusy.com if you just see how the comparison between a cubic bezier is you can see that this is how an ease function will be with respect to the y-axis. A linear is something which goes uh, in a linear fashion, but an ease in would be a little uh, faster in the beginning and then kind of uh, slow down. Or sorry, my bad. Uh, it will be a little slower because uh, you can see that the time is on the x-axis, right? Uh, let me just draw this out. You can see that ease in is something like this. So this is the time. So as time increases, as time increases here, you can see that the 
uh, rate of change of the state or the difference here, the styles are slower, right? So the rate of change is slow here, right? And it increases um, as you go here. Now, if you were to, uh, if you were to look at, um, if you were to look at this as a, a differentiation, I think the area under the curve, if it's more, then it's faster. Um, you can see the area under the curve is lesser, so it becomes um, slower in this case, right? So there is a bit of mathematics if you want to really understand how it goes here. Now. Um, so this is how you're able to use the ESIN out uh, into your uh, animation uh, requirements. So what can be transition, right? What all properties can be used for uh, transitions? So um, let's see if we have that information here. Uh, so basically, I think in uh, CSS, I'll, I'll probably list out a few here itself. Um, you can basically use background color, for example, um, position, background position, background color, border color, border, like any kind of um, any property which has some number which uh, can be moved from a value to another value can definitely be uh, put in uh, transitions. Right, like width, for example, um, you want to change the, uh, uh, like, for example, transform, like what we use. All of these are essentially that's something that you can uh, change in or using transition. Okay. Um, so you can see that things which cannot be transitioned are here, I guess. So certain CSS properties can be animated using CSS animations or CSS transformations. Uh, the animatable properties are all of those. So there's uh, plenty of them out there, which requires, uh, we can have a look at it whenever you want. Right, so can we uh, try to understand what are a lot of the properties which come under transition? We kind of wrote in a single line, right? Uh, this is a shorthand of working with it. Uh, but if you wanted to uh, truly understand what all goes uh, inside it, um, there's a little more of details in it. Now, uh, generally, there's something like uh, transition property, right? Uh, so if you were to take these individually, right, um, we would find a saying that we could, instead of writing this, we can say transition property. I can say all, right? Uh, the second was um, transition timing function. So I can say um, ease in, for example. The uh, third was the transition duration, right? I can put, let's say, uh, one second. Um, and let's put on um, transition or uh, delay. So if you want to delay to the pro property, you can put it, for example, you want a one second delay. In this case, what would happen is if I hover over it, it would wait for a second and then add a delay to it, wait for the delay. And then after that, uh, it would uh, do the property on it, right? The uh, transition that happens with that. So we can use for all. Now, for example, if I just said background. So what, what happens here is that you can see that the scale or the transform, that scale that happens is immediate, but the color or the change in the background, it takes time. So if I were to change this to transform, let's say, you can see that the color, background color changes immediately, but uh, the scale is, um, you're applying only to that transform property. So this is how you get to control what all can be applied. If you want multiple ones, I think you can just use a comma operation and uh, you can get 
it working for multiple ones. Right, so, so far we looked at uh, working with the transform property. We looked at the transition property also, right, where we were able to um, create this information here. Now, this is a simple tool out here, which I just showed you to kind of work with these cubic Beziers. Now, it is uh, as simple as kind of moving this around to create your curve. This will define how uh, the animation will be made, right? So you can just preview how the animation will be compared to a linear function, let's say. Right, you can see that it becomes, uh, it shoots up to the end and then slowly comes down later. But if I were to, uh, if I wanted to slow down that part, I can just change here. And you can see that towards the end, it becomes a little slow and then like kinds of uh, moves faster. Now, what does this actually mean? What does this cubic Bezier actually mean? This is nothing but um, a line that represents x1, comma y1, comma x2, comma y2. Right. So this this position over here is basically x1 and y1. So it's a coordinate system. So if I actually move it to the zero here, you can see that it's zero comma zero. Right. So this is essentially x comma y coordinate, x1, y1 coordinate, and then this is x2, y2 coordinate. So if you put zero, 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 one, one, this is as good as a linear function. Now, if I move this here in this format, you can see that this curve formed is basically tangential to this line here. And I said tangent, it is in this, it is just touching at one point basically. And that is this point here. So it is tangential at here. It forms a curve and it forms another curve also here, right? It forms another line here, and this curve is tangential to this line here. So this is how uh, the cubic Bezier basically creates a curve for you by taking your x1 and y2 position, um, which is kind of like an amplitude here, and x2 and y2 here, right? And it kind of creates this curve for you. So this is how the animation or the cubic Bezier curves are made, and this will define how uh, mathematically how the transition should be applied. So you might want to play around this bit to figure out this part. Now, uh, for me, if I had to just use this, I'll just copy this information here, right? And instead of this, I'll apply this here. Now, this will give me that kind of a output now. This is the cubic measure that I have defined. Now we can play around it with it and it'll give you different uh, timing functions, basically. So let's go and um, try to uh, play around this bit a little bit. Now, for example, um, I want to, let's say, rotate it, let's say 360. And if I just hover over it, and let's just refresh this. You can see that it now rotates and comes back in this format here. So you can create something like a spinner. Right. So let's go create another element. Let's call it the class spinner. Right. Um, so let's go write a uh, spinner, right? And we want some um, uh, some border and some properties to this, right? So we can actually get this done with some pure CSS. Uh, now, for example, let's go create a border of let's say eight pixels. Let's create solid and let's create um, black over there. Um, 
Now let's keep a border radius of 50 percentage. Um, let's put a width of um, 80 pixels, um, height of 80 pixels, right? Um, let's refresh that. We get this here in this format. Uh, now you have actually some property called border top, border bottom, and all that. So if you just think about it, um, we this is essentially it was initially a, a box. Right? It was initially a box. Now we made border radius 50 percent, so it becomes a circle. But if you really think about it, it still has those four parts, right? So this is how it was. So those four parts are there. So when you say border top, right, you can actually remove this part. So if I said border top, and let's say APX solid blue, you can see that you get this information here. So let's put a little gray here, right? And you can see that we get this kind of information here. So this is creating that part. Now with this, we can create our transition, right? And um, we can just say, um, We need to apply some property, right? So, uh, how to achieve this, right? Uh, it's a little different because when it comes to transform or transition, we are applying it to a particular property. Uh, for example, if I were to say um, dot spinner and say hover, right? And I applied transform here and I said uh, rotate by. 360 degree, right? And if I put transition and I put um, um, what else can we put? What can we put in transition? We need to put the properties, right? So let's copy this information here or let's apply that all one second. Um, let's say linear, right? And let's just save this here, right? You can now see that um, when you apply the transition to all, it actually makes the circle also the manner. So instead of all, let's only put it to transform. And now you can see that when I hover over it, it moves from zero to 360. But uh, so one thing you have to notice here is that uh, this is just on a hover that you were able to achieve this. Now let's say you wanted this to work continuously. So this is where you need to use something called animation property, which um, your uh, browser supports. Okay, so it's very similar to how transition works, but uh, instead it allows you to also uh, apply this between styles, right? So you have a little more control over this um, more than transition, right? So it allows you to uh, animate transitions from one CSS style to another. Now, it consists of two main properties, which is called the animation and then something called keyframes. Okay, so we're gonna look at these two things now to decide or how do we can, how can we, uh, create this out or create this spinner at least here. So let's comment this out. Right, we're just going to look at the spinner and see how we can convert this to an animation. So um, there are two things that happens here. One is we have something called an animation, right? So animation comes similar to transition. You can even ha have a shorthand or you can use the entire properties on. So over here, you can see that uh, what it uh, uh, tells you is that how, how long do you want to use it? For example, it's for three seconds, right? Then the easing function, if you want that is. So uh, we may not be able to get it correctly, but let's see if what we can achieve. Let's say easing, 
right? Um, I get, let's say, well, one second is probably the delay here, right? So we add a delay. Uh, let's say we did this for, I think, infinite. Right, and if I could just say, or let's say if I could just write slide in first, not slide in, I think we need to create that on our own. So let's see if you're able to get any output here. Uh, no, it doesn't work. So at this point, what they're asking you for is the name of the property that we want to apply. So we don't have this. What is this name that we said? So here they're saying that they use something called slide in. Now what is slide in? So this is where the keyframes come in, right? So we can create a keyframe. Now this is similar to how you create a variable in JavaScript. So if you have a variable like uh, uh, some ID equals to something, right? Similar to that, you have an animation name that you can give, or in this case, keyframes, you can give a name to it. Now, this keyframe can be given an information like say, um, rotate or spinner, for example. Now, when it comes to keyframes, what does a keyframe mean? A keyframe is basically how we define points in your animation. Now, I think when we started this discussion here in today's session, we said that assuming that this is your animation and goes from zero to N, or let's say hundred percentage, where zero is the starting and this is the ending, we can have different points to describe how it goes. Now we did a bit of it with the cubic uh, busier and uh, the easing functions, but to uh, have more control over it with animation, what you have are these keyframes which decide how your uh, the state or the style will be at different points, right? So let's assume this is 20%, this is 40%, could be 60, and then you have 80, and we can have different states there. So S prime or S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, like that, right? So we have this information stored uh, on each value, how much it will come. Now, how do you work with keyframes? It accepts three types of values. One is from, it takes two, or you can pass a percentage, like zero percentage or hundred percentage or such. So I'm just gonna write from, right? And I'm just gonna write from here. And I'm gonna say, um, from here, and I'm just gonna say here is rotate um, or transform, right? We know how to work with transform now. So I'm gonna say rotate, and I'm gonna put zero degree here. And I'm gonna say transform. And I'm gonna say rotate 360 degree. Right, so now you have the spinner which says it's from zero degrees to 360 degrees. This can also be written in this format, zero percentage to 100 percentage, okay. So let's see how this uh, works out in your application. Um, yeah, so we haven't used this in our animation. So let's go ahead and write spinner here. Um, and yeah, now you can see that we get the spinner and we are able to see this animation here. Now you can see that because of the ease in, there's a small um, issue that we get while it's changing. So let's refresh that and see how it comes out. So this is a more smooth flow that we can see at least with the um, values changing because of ease in, you're not able to get that. But if it was ease in and out, we may get a little more smoother animation. Right? So it slowly stops and then starts also in a very uh, smooth fashion. 
So we can even change this. This is the delay function, which is why it was taking one second to start. So now you can see that it takes three seconds to make one revolution. If I made this as one second, you can see that it's a little faster. So looking at the difference between is in and out, we have linear here, which is very linear in nature. It goes in the same speed, but with is in and out, it's a little more, uh, I mean, you can do a better job of this obviously, but uh, it gives you a little bit of a statement saying that this is um, moving at a, um, a, a little more, uh, slower ending and a slower starting right it gives a more uh, a better feeling to it now you can also have this like let's say 450 degrees right uh but now you can see that the starting is very different so sometimes you got to uh, uh you can have multiple layers in this instead of zero to um uh, from to uh, from and to you can have more specific ones so i'm just going to write zero percentage first and hundred percentage now right so we get this but we can also write something like 50 percentage i can say transform and let's say rotate of um let's put at uh let's have 450 degrees here And let's keep at 720 degrees. Right, and let's keep this as two seconds. So you can see now that uh, this actually now doesn't stop at one. It stops at 50, which is basically 90 degrees here. But uh, the second time it stops at 720 here. So we can actually play around to get different outputs here. So if I were to uh, control this, let's say 270 degrees, right? And if I put, let's say 50 percentage as, let's say 540. Um, and then um, let's see how this works out. Right, so you can see that it creates a little bit of a different output here. Um, we can have this a little different here. And if we just say linear, you can see that it creates a different, it doesn't feel like a very uh, simple animation that it is actually some processing happening at every turn. So, so you can actually control a lot more things by creating these keyframes and defining how the property should be. So, for example, you want the, um, let's say, border color to be aqua, right? So, you can see that. When it's 25 percent age, it becomes a different color. Or if I say border top color, right? It's becoming a different color. So you can just apply this property into it and then it automatically works with that, right? So the keyframes will basically define how the uh, styles should change across your animation. Now, instead of infinite, for example, if I just put three, it will run for three times, which means for nine seconds of total. Right, and then it stops. Right, so we were able to simply create a, our own custom spinner Right, just by using this simple animation that we have just created, we created a spinner keyframes, we applied animation on top of it, right? And um, we don't need our 
power error anymore over here. Right. Or maybe I think I'm zoomed in a little large now. This is correct. Right, so we have this um, pretty nice looking, um, pretty nice looking animation just that we've written with ten lines of code. Great. So let's go ahead and uh, see a little bit more what we can work with. Right. So I'm going to take one more example, and um, let's try to um, create a planet here, and maybe. Um, work with a simple uh, solar system or something like that. Can we? Is it? How do we approach that problem? Right. So if you really think about it, um, a solar system is basically you have some. You have the sun here, right? Um, you have Mercury. You have uh, Venus. You have Earth. Right. And you have Mars. Uh, let's let's limit it to the first four planets only, right? So um, let's try to uh, create the planet system that we just discussing, right? So let me just comment this out, and let's go create some uh, planets for us. Uh, let's just call this a sun. And let's go say sun. And over here, we should be able to uh, create something. So let's go create some classes for this. Uh, but let's also at the same time create our uh, planets also. So let's call it Mercury. Let's call it. Uh, Venus, let's call it Earth, let's call it Mars, right? Uh, we'll come to each of these individually. Um, I'm not going to write the uh, most accurate or the most best way to write this code, uh, but we're just going to manually uh, figure this out. So let's assume uh, the let's say sun is supposed to be a little more larger than the rest. So let's put height and width as 100 pixels. Let's put a background uh, as let's say orange. For a border radius percentage. Um, let's let's put our body to position absolute. Right. And pause, give me a second. So uh, in addition to this, we can also uh, add some properties. Um, so let's see how this works. Yeah, we have this here. So I can say um, this should be 50%. Um, now, when you do top and left as 50% here, and let's also put the height as 100 VH, which is the viewport, right? Um, and let's also put the position as absolute. This way it will move it to the um, to the full length over there. Right? So uh, there are a few things we need to fix here. Now, one thing that is pretty evident over here um, is that we need to kind of figure out how much to move it now for example if we have let's say sun in the center and let's say this is at 50 percent right now the 50 percent it starts from is 50 percent here and 50 percent here but because this is 100 pixels in in length right we should to get the center to come to actually the center of the um, viewport, we should we can use another formula. There's something called calculate. 
Now I can just put calculate and put P percentage minus, and I can put 100 pixels by two. Right, and let's just put it this way. Um, not really sure why the left is not working. Um, that's weird. Let me just put the width to be hundred percentage here. Yeah, I think that's fine now. I'm not sure why that wasn't working earlier. Great. So we have now this to be in the center right so let's say we need mercury over here and let's we can give it a different uh, color right? now i'm gonna apply similar values here right but i'm gonna change some small things over here also so i'm gonna say instead of 100 pixels i'm just gonna say venus is pretty small so let's put 20 pixels right and let's put a gray gray color right so we get this information in this manner here now i can just say translate or um, transform and i can apply a translate to it um since i know the um the x direction is 50 pixels you can see that it has reached on the circumference of the circle i can add something like 100 pixels this is not an accurate representation of uh, the solar system this is just a simple one um so we can have more ones also here like venus and we can just like kind of copy paste this over here right so let's add venus here right and let's let's give it a little darker color let's put a red on it right and um let's put 30 pixels there Right, and let's put 150 pixels over here. Uh, I'm not sure which is bigger, I honestly don't remember. Um, but I'm assuming Venus is bigger. Or we could change that to something, or we could just increase the solar the sun to something larger. Oops. Right, okay. Um, so let's put earth, let's put earth, let's put an aqua, uh, aqua marine, right? And let's put this to, let's say 200 pixels. Um, let's put 70 pixels. So uh, we might need to make this to 30. Right, again, we don't really care about uh, the exact values um i can say orange right here let's say 50 pixels i can say 40 pixels all right um let's keep it as 300 pixels great so we have this here in this format um now we are going to assume that we can start from the original uh, value here, right? And we basically need to uh, rotate this by a particular orbit, right? So let's let's just say we um, add a keyframe and say solar system or something like that. And from and I'm just gonna say transform and rotate to zero degrees and two um, and transform and rotate. Um, let's put 360 degrees. Now to all of these, I can basically apply um, some kind of an animation, right? Um, and I can say animation <coughs> and I can just say um, 
solar system right the time can be different so let's say two second infinite and let's say linear so let's assume uh, mercury takes 2.2 seconds i can put 2.5 here i can put three here i can put four here Now, what happens here is that the particular transform is causing an issue that it, it basically changes our, tra our translate over there, right? So we are actually not able to get this because the translate is uh, changing for it. Uh, so if you wanted to actually like, um, right, let's say translate, and if I say, uh, 200 pixels then you can see that we are able to get it now uh it might be a challenge that we cannot actually sit and do this for each and every one of them right so we saw that um we gave actually like some value into this uh, manually right so how do we how do we get this to work uh in this like dynamically for each now, uh, one thing that comes with um, CSS is something called CSS variables. Uh, and I'm not going to getting into specifics of it, but you can create custom uh, properties uh, in your application by using the CSS variables, right? Uh, and how you define it is by actually providing something called, or saying you can use two hyphens and give it a value. So I'm going to say move X and uh, instead of um, on like the value that I give in the transform, uh, I'm going to use it in this variable move X. This way, I'm just going to say move X over here and I'm going to apply the move X over here. Sorry, I think we need to use a function called war and then I'm going to put the so what it does is that it tries to find out the um, variable associated to this. And in this case, move X, right? So you can see that I got Mercury to be moving in that particular manner. So all it does is it creates this variable against Mercury, uh, this particular variable against it. And you're trying to uh, determine that variable over here. Now, how will this work for multiple ones? So if you just um, add this for each and every one of them, and if I just say uh, 150 pixels here, let's put 230 pixels here, let's put 300 pixels, right? Now you can see that you've got your simple solar system working, right? And you were able to um, kind of create this uh, in this format here. You are able to create this size or uh, this, you are able to move it dynamically basically. So CSS does come with a lot more powerful features like this, which makes it easy to work with. Uh, so CSS variables are a very powerful way to work with it. Now I can actually make this code a little more better. Um, for example, uh, how we work with um, so you can see a lot of the values are actually common across all of these, right? If you think about it, the uh, border radius, uh, the, I guess the top left, all of this can be actually moved to a common uh, system, right? And I can actually define that over here. So if I just said dot planet or something, Right, you can see that the width um, and I can use the, I can use a particular, I can say radius or um, diameter, right? And I can say height is also diameter. Now uh, we can define the top to be 
calculating 50 minus and then i can say war of diameter m by 2 oops um i just need to put left here right um what is the mean of we can put border radius as 50 percentage um we can put the position as absolute right this way i don't need a lot of this information for example i can get rid of let's do the planets first um what else do we need we don't need transform because that is also coming in the um inside the keyframes i can get rid of the top left get rid of position um i can get rid of the width and the height all i need to put is the uh diameter over here i need to define the diameter so let's just keep diameter here and define what that value is right so i can put 20 pixels here i can put 30 pixels here i can put 70 pixels here and 40 pixels here right and i'll just go ahead and or delete all of that right and let's refresh it um we have given all the diameters to all the uh, planets here but um i guess it's not working let's see if we actually gave this as a class name we have not so let's go and um add it to our classes Right, and now you can see that uh, you got the same output here. So it becomes a lot more cleaner um, to work with this. We can also, I guess, um, give it to the sun also. I mean, although sun is not a planet, we can still kind of give this here. So um, I can say move x is zero pixels. Um, diameter is 150 pixels. And I can actually get rid of all of this. Um, I'll need to apply the planet here also. Right, and we get a similar output here. Right, so all you've kind of done is kind of create these individual uh, classes for Sun, Mercury, on uh, Venus, Earth, and Mars, we defined a variable called uh, move x in each of them, right? We defined the diameter for it. And any of the other uh, classes that is attached to it, we'll try to derive those CSS variables out of it. So we calculate the width, height, top, left out of it. Even here for the animations, we are able to derive that information out of it. So this makes uh, CSS uh, a lot powerful and uh, it makes your code also clean and you get a lot lot of uh, flexibility by working with this right so um, it doesn't it didn't take a lot of lines but we were able to create a nice looking ui just from a simple animation so we'll end the session here for the first session um so we looked at a lot of things just to summarize we looked at transform we looked at uh, translate uh, and other properties within the transform, like rotate, for example. Um, we looked at skew, uh, we looked at skew, we looked at scale, and all of those things. Now, in addition to that, we looked at transition, which is useful if you want to apply some style to a particular um, element. Maybe like you want when the page loads, or maybe on hover, something like you want to apply a transition. After that, we looked at an animation where we were apply uh, able to apply um, a larger set of animation or, or using keyframes, we were able to create some animation and apply it to a particular object or a particular class, right? Uh, so I highly request to everyone to like try these three things out um, and uh, get some outcomes out of it. Play around a lot because uh, 
uh, and machine uh, to get it right. Sometimes you got to be around. Right, so this is not an accurate version of the solar system, but this is uh, good enough for uh, learning how to work with animation. 